Carl Amos. He's an emeritus professor with the National Oceanography Center at the University of Southampton. Thank you for joining us on the program. Uh, you know, flooding is not new to Venice. It typically happens around this time of year, but this is the worst it's been in 50 years. Why has the government done nothing to prevent the flooding? Well, I think uh, they have done quite a bit, including spending 7 billion uh, euros on developing the Mose project. And in fact, they do quite a bit in terms of protecting the foundations to many of the buildings in the canals that surround the uh, many uh, small islands that comprise Venice itself. It's a difficult situation and it's one that's occurring globally in coastal areas. And lessons are being learned on how to protect coastally vulnerable situations from rising sea levels and increasing storminess. Uh, but it's not a trivial problem and it's one that's going to take a considerable amount of effort, not just by the government, but also by the local indigenous people living in Venice to be able to solve uh, this issue. And, and I, I, I think that in the fullness of time, this is a situation that can be resolved. Mm -hmm. As you said, there we see flooding in many other parts of the world, many coastal areas. Exactly. But what makes the situation in Venice so special? And is it actually getting worse in Venice? Um, well, in some ways, the extreme water levels, you could argue, is not getting worse because 53 years ago, in 1966, the water level was, in fact, 10 centimetres higher than it is today. This is an extreme event, and extreme events do happen, uh, and they happen uh, just because uh, that is the nature of extreme events. It, it's a random phenomenon that can take place in any coastal area. So there's nothing special about an extreme event that's taking place in Venice at this moment in time. Um, the uh, steady rise in mean sea level, which is taking place, and the subsid subsidence, which is taking place, will have long-term uh, consequences. But of course, uh, Venice is historically, culturally, and economically very, very important. And uh, it really can't be overstated the significance of this cultural gem within the Mediterranean and globally. 23 million visitors a year come to the city, and it would be quite important to maintain this for future generations. Uh, added to that, Venice is situated in the biggest lagoon in the Mediterranean, and the uh, the environmental importance of this to migratory shorebirds and to, as a nursery for the local fisheries industry, again, can't be overstated. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the uh, Mose uh, flood defense project, which Italians have been working on since 2003, but yeah. is still not operational. So in the short term, is there anything that Venetians can do to limit the damage, given as we do see this flooding year after year? Yes. Well, of course, they have to learn from experiences. This isn't the first time it's happened in Venice. And of course, it takes place on average 30 to 50 times a year in the present day. Clearly not to the depths that we've seen it today. And it, it certainly looks very bad. And I sympathize enormously for the Venetians. Many of my friends happen to live there. And, and it, it, it can be catastrophic if you happen to be there. But remember that the water level uh, predicted uh, in the coming days is only going to be 30 to 40 centimeters uh, above the predicted. And, and essentially, the, the forecasting, the water level forecasting and the predictions are, are timely and they're very accurate. And, and these warnings need to be taken into consideration and taken very seriously. And doing simple things uh, like flood proofing your own particular home at a local level and also just lifting the valuables as much as you can onto the kitchen or dining room table okay. would in most cases be enough to save those valuable okay. things that are, that are important to you. Okay, we'll leave it there for now. Thank you, Carl Amos.